Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to FUTU Holdings Second Quarter 2021 Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After the management's prepared remarks, there will be a Q&A session. Today's conference call is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn the conference over to your host for today's conference call, Daniel Yuan, Chief of Staff and Head of IR at FUTU. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks, Operator. And thank you for joining us today to discuss our second quarter 2021 earnings results. Joining me on the call today are Mr. Leif Lee, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Arthur Chen, Chief Financial Officer, and Robin Xu, Senior Vice President. As a reminder, today's call may include forward-looking statements, which represent the company's belief regarding future events, which by their nature are not certain and are outside of the company's control. Forward-looking statements involving here and risk and uncertainty. We caution you that a number of important factors could cause that to result to differ materially from those contained in any forward-looking statement. For more information about the potential risks and uncertainties, please refer to the company's filings with the SEC, including its registration statement. So with that, I will now turn the call over to Leif. Leif will make his comments in Chinese, and I will translate. Hi, Jiao Hao. Thank you for joining us in the FUTU 2021 本季度付出实现了一个重要的里程碑有资产客户数突破了一百万人商比去年同期增长百分之二百三十有资产客户数在本季度增长了二十一点一万创造了我们第二好的季度成绩我们对卓越用户体验和品牌形象的不懈追求
拉低了有资产客户平均资产余额。Our total client assets were 503 billion Hong Kong dollars at quarter end, representing 253% growth on a year-over-year -year basis and 9% growth on a quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis, despite challenging mark-to-market -market impacts. Average client assets came down sequentially to 503,000 Hong Kong dollars as same client acquisition in new markets picked up and dragged average balance. 本季度，我们的总交易量为一点三万亿港币，同比增长百分之一百零四，其中每股的交易量占比约百分之六十四。交易量相比上季度有明显下降，客户交易的换手率在不同市场均出现了下滑。市场走势的不确定让部分客户选择了观望。如果市场观望情绪浓厚，我们预计在未来几个季度平台交易量的增长。将会主要由客户人数和资产余额的增长驱动，而非靠交易换手率的提升所驱动。Total trading volume was up 104% year over year to 1.3 trillion Hong Kong dollars, of which U.S. trading constituted approximately 64%. Trading volume came down meaningfully from the first quarter due to a much lower turnover rate across different trading markets and client cohorts. We have seen our clients stay on the sidelines amid market uncertainties, and we expect our trading volume growth in the coming quarters to be driven mostly by expansion in client counts and assets rather than trading turnover, should current market environment persist. 尽管二季度末港股 IPO 的火热行情分流了部分财富管理、业务资产，但富途大象财富在本季度依然实现了环比正增长。我们也预计未来几个季度。财富管理资产规模将保持稳健提升。截至六月三十日，超过七点四万名客户持有一百三十八亿港币的财富管理资产，资产量同比增长百分之五十九，环比增长百分之五。第二季度，我们和七家行业知名的资产管理机构建立了合作关系，包括高盛、瑞银和信安。富途也成为了华夏香港旗下的。华夏精选大中华科技基金唯一的分销商，这支基金是目前香港唯一一支专注中国科技行业的公募基金。另外，我们也在持续优化和迭代我们的产品能力，例如，我们加入了基金投资组合再平衡功能，升级了货币市场基金的自动申赎功能。现在，客户在开通了自动申赎功能之后，系统会根据客户的闲置资金。和融资融券的账户余额，自动进行货币基金的申购和赎回。Our wealth management business, Money Plus, has been relatively immune to the market downturn. Although the Hong Kong IPOs at the end of the quarter took away some of the assets accumulated over the quarter, and we expect steady asset balance growth in coming quarters. As of June 30th, over 74,000 clients held wealth management positions. And total client assets in wealth management were 13.8 billion Hong Kong dollars, up 59% year over year and 5% quarter over quarter. Money Plus established new partnerships with seven reputable asset managers in the quarter, including Goldman Sachs, UBS, and Principal. We also became the exclusive distributor of China AMC's Select Greater China Technology Fund, the only China technology-focused mutual fund in Hong Kong. We continue to innovate on product features. We added fund portfolio rebalancing function and upgraded the functionality of money market funds, where clients can now opt to automatically subscribe and redeem money market funds based on their idle cash and margin balance positions. 本季度末，我们的企业服务，富途安逸共有一百八十六家 IPO 和 IR 客户，以及二百六十三家 ESOP 客户。相比去年同期分别增长百分之一百九十一和百分之一百五十三，我们会进一步提升一站式 eSOP 服务的能力，并为企业管理层和员工提供更多的增值配套服务。我们批量处理复杂的跨区域 eSOP 授予的经验，将帮助我们在未来继续赢得更多大型企业客户的信任。Our enterprise business, Futu IME, has 186 IPO and IR clients, as well as 263 ESOP Solutions clients as of quarter end. 
representing 191% and 153% year-over-year growth, respectively. We continue to enhance the value proposition of our ESOP business by providing an end-to-end one-stop solution and various value-added services for the management team and employees of our corporate clients. Our experience in handling complicated ESOP granting at scale across different geographies helps us continue to win over large-scale corporate clients. 保持较低付费客户流失率的同时，我们也很高兴地继续看到强劲的用户活跃度数据。六月，交易日的平均日活人数依然保持在一百万以上，用户在平台上的日均活跃时间大约为三十分钟。为了进一步提升用户的活跃度，我们不断吸引不同类型的人员和机构入驻平台来丰富社区内容，也在不断优化。从而实现更精准的内容推荐。截至二季度末，有超过六百家公司在我们的社区平台建立了企业号，并通过企业号与零售投资者进行互动交流，这为平台的用户提供了宝贵的信息和数据，来辅助他们的投资决策。Despite low-paying client attrition, we are encouraged to see robust user engagement data as average CAV remained above one million. And daily average user time spent hovered around 30 minutes on each trading day in June. In an effort to drive user engagement, we continue to enrich content in our social community by attracting different stakeholders and improve content recommendation. As of quarter end, over 600 companies have set up enterprise accounts in our social community to interact with retail investors, providing our users invaluable data to facilitate investment decision making. 接下来。请首席财务官阿舍介绍我们本季度的财务表现。Next, I'd like to invite our CFO author to discuss our financial performance. Thanks, Lee and Daniel. Please allow me to walk you through our financial performance in the second quarter. All numbers are in Hong Kong dollar unless otherwise noted. Total revenue was 1.78 billion, an increase of 129% from the second quarter of 2020, and a decrease of 28% sequentially. Brokerage commission and handling charge income was 798 million, up 95% year over year, and down 40% Q&Q. The Q&Q decline was mainly due to a sharp drop in trading turnover amid dampened market sentiment from about six times in the first quarter to three times in the second quarter, to be specific. This was partially offset by higher client assets and a slightly sequential uptick in blended commission rate to 6.1 basis point. Interesting terms was 610 million, an increase of 194% year over year and a decrease of 7% Q&Q. The year-over-year increase in interest income was mainly driven by higher margin financing balance, higher security borrowing and lending service income, as well as higher ICO financing income. The mild quarterly decline can be mainly attributed to a reduction in security borrowing income as the market value of U.S. stock borrowing and the borrowing rate both drop sequentially. Other income was $169 million, up 141% year-over-year and down 24% Q&Q. The year-over-year growth and the Q&Q decline can both be attributed to changes in our IT or subscription service charge income and the currency exchange service income as market conditions fluctuated. In terms of costs, our total cost was $279 million, an increase of 81% from the same quarter last year and a decrease of 37% from last quarter. Brokerage commission and handling charge expenses was 145 million, an increase of 89% year over year. This increase was roughly in line with our changes of our brokerage commission and handling charge income. Interest income was 80 million, up 98% year over year. The growth was primarily due to number one, higher costs associated with our security borrowing and the lending business, and the number two, higher margin financing interest expenses driven by higher margin financing balance partially offset by lower cost of funding. Processing and servicing costs were 54 million, up 48% year over year. The increase was primarily due to an increase in crowd service fee to process higher number of concurrent trades. As a result, total gross profit was 1.3 billion, 
an increase of 143% from 534 million in the same period in 2020. Gross profit margin increased from 77.6% in the second quarter of 2020 to 82.3% this quarter, thanks to high operating leverage as a result of our larger business scale. Total operating expenses was up 145% year over year and 32% Q-on-Q to $647 million, over 40% of which was related to our international initiative in Singapore and the U.S. markets. R&D expenses was $173 million, an increase of 48% year over year and then 26% Q-on-Q, roughly in line with our R&D headcount increase. We continue to invest in our U.S. clearing capabilities and dedicate around 40% of our R&D personnel to product development in Singapore and in the U.S. to drive a smoother and customized product experience for local users. Selling and marketing expenses was $377 million, up 292% year over year and 37% Q&Q. The increase was primarily due to higher branding and marketing spending, especially in the international markets to cultivate brand image and acquire new clients. In the second quarter of 2021, over half our sales selling and marketing expenses were devoted to the overseas markets. GNA expenses was $97 million, an increase of 91% year over year and 24% QNQ due to increase in headcount for general and administrative personnel. Our effective tax rate increased from 9% in the first quarter to 14% in the second quarter since our total tax credit arising from accumulated loss in the mainland business has been fully utilized so far, and our net revenue derived from our U.S. stock trading decline in the second quarter. Going forward, we do expect our effective tax rate to be in the range of 12 to 14 percent. As a result, our net income for the quarter increased by 126 percent year over year and a decrease by 54% Q-on-Q to 534 million. That concludes our prepared remarks. We now like to open the call to questions. Operator, please go ahead. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. If you wish to ask a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad and wait for your name to be announced. If you wish to cancel your request, please press the pound or hash key. Your first question comes from Catherine Liu of Morgan Stanley. Please ask your question. Hey, 感谢管理层给我这个提问的机会我是摩根士丹利的刘新和我这边有两个问题第一个的话是想请问管理层可不可以给我们一些就是三季度到现在的一些指引比如说像获客速度然后户均的客均资产换手率啊或者是这个交易
uh, this market market loss or gain uh, will be you know come to the to the to the average numbers. And uh, you know, uh, in terms of the client's trading velocity, we do expect you know trading velocity have some rebound uh, in the uh, in in July and uh, uh, August, uh, given the market, especially you know high these you know tech stocks uh, have. Uh, meaningful setbacks, we do see some, you know, bottom patients uh, from the retail investors. And, uh, you know, unlike, you know, many, uh, unlike the situation in, in second quarter, many investors sit on the sidelines, uh, we do see, you know, some, you know, uh, participations uh, in, in, the, in the third quarter. So, uh, if based on the current run rate, I would expect, you know, in terms of the top lines, we may see some, you know, sequential q on q increase. Uh, in the third quarter, compared with the uh, compared with the second quarters, uh, in terms of the you know client acquisition cost, uh, I think you know on the absolute amount levels, uh, this marketing campaign spending will be roughly in line with what we did uh, in the second quarters. Uh, but definitely, you know the client acquisition speed will slow down due to the market conditions. So uh, this will affect. Uh, the denominator, uh, denominator numbers, and we will let our CAC numbers uh, have certain increase uh, in the uh, in the third quarter compared with the second quarter. For your second question, uh, I think number one, uh, our VI structure is slightly different for many uh, compared with many Chinese uh, ADRs uh, companies because most of our, our revenue now derived from the offshore. Essentially, we do not generate any revenues from our VIE structures. So even, you know, uh, uh, there will be some new regulations uh, on the VIE structure. I do not expect that it will have some meaningful impact operational-wise or financial-wise uh, to our business. And uh, definitely, we have noticed some recent trends uh, in the capital markets and we are actively conducting policy research and evaluation in this regard. We will make a very comprehensive assessment to ensure that the decision to maximize our shareholders' best long-term interest is made. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Your next question comes from Ethan Wang from CLSA. Please ask your question. 谢谢管理员首先恭喜二季度取得其实也是强劲的业绩当然我们知道就是监管环境在七月发生了变化我这个问题有两个问题都是关于 然后第二个问题就是因为七月份包括这个滴滴的事件现在这个退市的风险确实也越来越被市场所担心那如果退市真的发生的话这些中概股很有可能会将香港这边的二次上市的这个股票转成这个prime listing 呃，那在这种情况下，他们就会被加入到呃这个沪港通或者深港通的这个名单当中。那这是不是意味着将来呃我们富途会与所有的就是中国安硕的这些broker进行竞争？呃，管理层会不会认为这是一个未来的风险？
for the second question. Uh, in terms of our current U.S. store trading, uh, uh, essentially AER just accounts for a very small part. Uh, if we do some back testing around, you know, 15 percent of our U.S. stock trading belong to these Chinese ADRs. Uh, Robin or the uh, the other one is just that, like, for example, in the Mei Gu, uh, last year sold, then, that, that, Chinese Mei Gu companies, many should choose to go to Hong Kong to sell. So, so, here, Chinese Mei Gu to go to Hong Kong to sell should become a kind of a linear trend. Actually, for the long term, 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 一个利好的消息，同时，呃，从我们自身的一个经营数据也能看到，呃，港港股 IPO 是具有非常强的一个货币化的能力，那么 IPO 的认购费和呃马仔的利息都会呃产生不错的一个收入。另外就是，就我们目前的一个客户的结构构成来说，其实港股的交易时段对于我们的客户会更为友好，也会更加有利于客户的交易。Yeah, we think the return of you know China ADRs back to Hong Kong could be a structural trend, although we don't really take a stance on how the regulations will evolve. And the Hong Kong IPOs generally have very high monetization potentials, and we generate a, a, a pretty sizable percentage of our revenue from the IPO subscription and the margin financing interest. And also, uh, the, you know, in Hong Kong, there's more friendly trading hours for our clients. And also, just to add on um, to your other point about primary about converting to primary listing, um, well, we, we don't think there's you know the onshore brokers will necessarily you know pose a great threat to our business because a lot of the popular China uh, the Chinese companies listed on Hong Kong right now are already accessible to our mainland Chinese investors through Stock Connect, for example, Tencent. Um, but some of these large cap um, tech companies still account for a majority of our asset balance in Hong Kong stocks. And in comparison to trading through a Stock Connect, um, you know, trading directly in the Hong Kong market offers more flexible and more favorable trading hours and trading time. So, like, if you know mainland China has a public holiday, it does not affect your trading hours in Hong Kong. And also, there is a lot more flexibility around margin financing, and there is a wider selection of stocks that you can invest in. Um, so we don't believe that a number of China, Chinese companies converting uh, from secondary listing to primary listing will change our competitive edge in this market. Sure, got it. That's good. Thank you. 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 呃，特点就是包括就是整个的客户群以及说呃客户群所对应的特征，其实呃都都会作为一个相对相对特殊独特的存在吧。所以我觉得并不会因为这里啊、呃、是不是有一些中概股回到呃香港来上市，会让这里产生更进一步的变化。就复读依然会呃拥有他自己的一个竞争力。嗯，好的，谢谢。And we also have a very differentiated client cohort as compared to some of the onshore brokers. So we don't think our competitive advantage will be diluted um, should this uh, circumstance actually um, realize it. Your next question comes from the line of Zoe Zong from Jeffries. Please ask your question. 哎，管理层你们好，感谢接受我的提问，我是 Jeffrey 苏东宇。然后我这边有两个问题想请教一下，呃，第一个是关于 Tech， 因为我们注意到 QOQ 的 Effective Tech r a t i o 有百分之十四点五，就是高于之前的水平。想请教一下这个背后的原因是什么，以及往后看的话啊、呃、应该怎么看？然后第二个问题是想啊、呃、请教一下，因为香港 IPO 结算的周期未来会从 T 加五缩短到 T 加二嘛，然后当然可能是到二零二二年的四季度才会执行。啊，这个对于我们的 IPO 反正性业务的影响应该怎么看呢？呃、uh, ，Hi management, thanks for taking my question. This is Zoe from Jeffrey, and I have two questions. Uh, my first question is uh is regarding the tax rate. 
as we have noted that the effective tax rate for Q2 was 14.5%, uh, which is much higher than the previous quarter. Uh, wondering what's the reason for the increase and how should we estimate this number going forward? And my second question is, uh, we know that Hong Kong Exchange plans to adopt a T plus two uh, settlement cycle instead of the current T plus five uh, in the fourth quarter of 2022. Uh, wondering how should we think about the impact on our IPO financing business? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Zoe. I will answer the first question, and I will leave the second question to leave. Uh, actually, I, I mentioned this in, in our open remarks. Uh, you are right. Our effective tax rate increased from 9% in the first quarter to 14.5% in the second quarter. Uh, the reason actually comes from two thoughts. Uh, number one is our tax credit arising from historical accumulated loss in the China operation has been fully utilized. So this is a permanent effect. And the second leg is our net revenue derived from our U.S. stock trading uh, belong to these mainland individuals. Actually, we can make our offshore claims in Hong Kong, uh, but you know, their U.S. stock trading volume in the second quarter declined. Therefore, we have some temporary impact uh, in the second quarter arising from these second reasons. Going forward, uh, we expect our effect tax rate will be in the range of 12% to 14%. Thank you. Oh,那比那第二个问题就是关于那个呃香港的一个公开招股的这样的一个一个变化。那首先呃IPO的融资利息在呃今年上半年在我们收入大概是百分之四左右。那么二零二零年在我们整个收入是百分之六不到。那所
And um, we believe that you know the IPO financing income makes up a very significant income for a lot of the mid to small size uh, brokers. So this policy could actually um, you know in, in, contribute to industry consolidation and uh, direct a lot of these retail investors to platforms like Futu that have better user experience and more capital for them to use during the IPO. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Once again, if you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Once again, it is star 1 if you wish to ask a question. Your next question comes from Han Yang Wang from 86 Research. Please ask your question. Uh, 就这些会不会对我们未来这个ESOP的业务产生影响,以及这个ESOP业务的如果产生影响的话,会影响我们在大陆地区的一个获客? Uh, I will translate my questions. Uh, thanks, Mandarin, for taking my questions. Uh, congratulations on another great quarter. Uh, I have a follow-up question on the IPO business. So, will the uncertainties for China ADR's IPO, as well as the recent slowdown of uh, Hong Kong IPOs, impact our ESOP business? And will that also impact our user acquisition in mainland China? So, you saw. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, let me take this question. Uh, I think number one, uh, the slowdown of Chinese companies overseas ADR uh, IPO is just a temporary situation. Uh, we do understand many Chinese companies are uh, in the pipeline and that they are waiting for more clarity. Uh, in terms of the, you know, the regulations from China and also from the U.S. regulators uh, down the road. Uh, therefore, I think you know, the impact will be uh, very short term. Uh, and having said that, we also see, as Lee mentioned before, uh, we see more and more you know, U.S. listed companies and also um, pre-IPO companies will consider Hong Kong as their primary listing stage uh, rather than you know, U.S. Uh, in, the, in the past. Uh, we do have a very strong edge uh, in Hong Kong market, uh, given Hong Kong is our home base. Uh, therefore, uh, we do think you know, uh, client acquisition through the ESOP, through the IPO will continue. Uh, just give you two, uh, some, some you know, breakdowns uh, in terms of our current client acquisition channels. Uh, organic already accounts for uh, you know, over 50%. Uh, if we just calculate ESOP channel uh, combined with these group account opening, and we'll just account for around 10% of our total new uh, paying clients uh, in Hong Kong every quarter. So I think the impact is still manageable. Uh, thank you, very helpful. Thank you. We have another question from the line of Catherine Liu from Morgan Stanley. Please ask your question. 感谢管理层不好意思我这边还有一个变现的问题就想请问我看到了这个新加坡的获客非常强劲但是可能也理解说就是在一个新的市场开始获客的时候最开始可能更多的是注重客户的数量或者是这个市场份额而不是一个变现
Uh, I think in terms of age and the training velocity, uh, this population is very similar to what we see uh, in, in Hong Kong market. Uh, the average age is around 30 years old. And that they do trade a lot, particularly you know for the for the U.S. markets. Uh, now the average car asset in Singapore is around the six thousand uh, Singapore dollars. Uh, of course, you know it is uh, relatively low compared with the average assets uh, what we witness in China and in Hong Kong. But encouragingly, I think you know if we look at the core four uh, basis, uh, the the new clients we acquired in March and April. Uh, their core uh, assets already almost doubled uh, in the past four to, uh, four to five months. So back to your question, I think number one, definitely we think uh, that the nature of our business is just more like a rolling a snowball. Uh, we are very happy to go along with our clients uh, in their investment journeys. As we believe as time goes by, uh, their average assets will become bigger and, both, and bigger. Uh, number two, definitely we will, we will have a more service offering, more product offerings in the pipeline. Uh, hopefully we will launch more business uh, in the coming two quarters. Uh, for instance, we will provide uh, Singapore clients to participate uh, in the Hong Kong IPO retail tranche. And uh, not to mention, we will also uh, expand our wealth management product offerings, uh, current stages offering to the mainland and the Hong Kong people to the Singapore local residents as well. Therefore, I think you know, as, as we provide more and more uh, products and service, we will find more monetization areas to enhance our output. Thank you very much. Thank you. If there are no further questions at this time, I would now like to hand the conference back to Daniel. For closing remarks. That concludes our call today. On behalf of the Food to Management team, I would like to thank you for joining us today. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact me or any of our investor relations representatives. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. That does conclude our conference for today. Thank you for participating. You may now all disconnect.